We thank you for the life of your dear son, Gideon Kojo. And Lord, even as we start this service, we ask that your spirit will work within us. The Lord will be and continue to be a source of comfort to this family, even as we reflect on the life and give you thanks for the years you gave to Gideon. So we ask that you take over. This service, we ask that you be exalted and we ask that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. I know that my redeemer lives and he shall stand up on the last day upon the earth, whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold, and not any other. And the Apostle Paul reminds us that we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing. So friends, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken, may his name be praised forever. And the word of God still exhausts us, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, Neither the present nor the future, nor any other powers, neither height nor depth, 
no hope of Dios, no creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we shall all go with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the deepest valley of darkness, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will reign the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever it shall be, world without end. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, allow it be your name, your kingdom come. O oh, Heavenly Father, who in your Son Jesus Christ has given us a true faith and a sure hope, help us to pray to live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body to everlasting life. And strengthen this faith and hope in us all the days of our lives through the love of your Son Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. We can take our seats. So I want to welcome all of us to All Saints Cathedral as we celebrate the life of uh, Mr. Indian Konjo. Uh, welcome the family members, welcome friends, welcome people from all walks of life who have come to mourn, to celebrate the life of this uh, Son of God. I want to welcome you to this uh, cathedral, bringing you greetings from the entire pastoral team, the provost and all the rest. Being a Monday, a number of, uh, of them are resting a bit because of the hectic work of uh, yesterday. But uh, there's a few of them will be joining us as we gather on this, this service. Now let me invite uh, there is something that we are supposed to have in the EMC. The power will be giving us some slow, slow music as we go into the time of laying on of, of reef. The EMC. Yes, this is a good
Thank you so much, my brother. Turn on it up. Praise the Lord and good morning. I'm the Reverend Patrick Kamala, and I'd like to thank each one of us for coming to stand with everybody. Uh, there's a little bit of adjustment. I'd like to invite the MC to come. And Mama, at the seminar, you will be the last when everybody has laid for you.
cross and road uh, to come and take us through the history of the world. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since, that is, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed, instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan, and we are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly. The next reading is John 5, chapter 3, 4, 29. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged that has crossed over from death to life. Very truly I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. I know it's hard to say come as when people think that this is the time for morning. But I just want to bring us to what has just been read to us that in every way each one of us is the destination. So look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Look at your neighbor, don't fear them. Help them from breathing to real better. The neighbor, all of us, this is the destination. And that's what we want to tell you. That's the truth. Let us pray. Lord, I love you. Father, I want to give you praises and thanks for the life we have lived. Your word declares to us in Psalm 19. That the life span you have given us is 70, but if we are strong, it's 80. And now your own has gone beyond that. So, as people, as a church, as a family, as friends, yes, you told us to grieve, but to grieve with hope. We want to say thank you for the way the life we have led. Thank you for the family left behind the children and the grandchildren. I pray that even as we share, we will convict each one of us 
to look through what we are doing in our lives and how we can run the race to reach such an age. But in all things, may your name be glorified through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ibarra, and your Reverend Patrick Kamara, who was a Yesu, or the name is Reverend Patrick Kamara, for those who can't hear the heavenly language. Tell your neighbor that that was the heavenly language. So, do everything possible to learn your language if you don't know. Or if you are forgotten because of migration and movements here and there. Uh, Paul brings a very interesting point to each and every person. He lived a life full of suffering. And his, his case was tougher than most of us have lived. And so he looked at his weakness at that time. And also he looked at what is the end result which will be resurrection. Brothers and sisters, several times we look at things in our perspective as we walk in the world together. It's like when you give birth to a baby, and I don't know how many of us have that normally coming clear. If it's a baby girl, I don't know if you look immediately at what the wedding of this person will be, and even the burial. I don't think that most of us think about that. If it's a baby boy, I don't think that even you imagine that this would be a bank of Uganda governor or this kind of thing or a minister, and even maybe the time how. Uh, their church service and life will be up to the day of their up to the day when they die. But Paul started as a very brilliant man, a man who had five degrees, and he could uh, just challenge anybody. And he had nine languages that he could speak. Nobody could interpret for him. He could interpret clearly. And I know we have some of us, or some of your families. He knew God deeply, but in his own understanding, to the extent that he persecuted the people who were also supporting him. He said, "What did you but in a different way?" He was a, a next to the professor Gamale. If you may want to think of any professor around, who is your best professor? Or the best professor in some of the universities we have. So he was next to the senior professor. And everybody respected him and the state gave him authority to carry a sword, like as if he was one of the senior officers of the army of the government. But in his life, he did not look at what the end of his life would be like. He didn't. He knew I'm a genius, I'm a lecturer, I'm a, a, a teacher, and I'm a businessman because he did uh, tent making. He was very brilliant and very innovative like many of us could be. But Paul comes out to persecute the church, saying I'm defending the church, and on his way to Damascus, and when he was called Saul. He meets Jesus Christ, who turns him and sees the commitment he had and says, So that's why you are you persecuting me? So some of us would be very good at uh, the missions and we downlook the concept of church. But at the end of the day, when we are dead, actually we are not dead to the time, whether they take us to church or not, and everybody is busy rushing you to church. Yet you are actually not in for it. But my, I have good news and bad news for us from those in that situation. One, if you don't make a choice when you are still alive to follow Christ and have a name written in the book of life, that was your decision and it's done and received. That's the bad news. So, 
whether we do the service here and we stay praying and we get every day praying. If you don't make that choice, whether we are dead or whatsoever, we can't change it. That's the bad news. But the good news is that most of us we challenge these things out of brain and ego, yet we know the facts. How do we tell? When it's a function, like this one, I say, all religious leaders be praising. Actually, you know God, but you're just liberating. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor that have been like that. And when there is anything to do with the baptism of children, you say, especially as you say, take the children and the baptism. And for you, you are not coming to church. When there is anything, Christmas or whatever is there, give them a cow. I don't think I'm speaking from <laughs> inexperience, but I'm speaking from experience. Now, what does that mean? That quite a number of times at the last minute in our groaning, we give our lives to God and know Him. I have seen patients who call us actually have a very big challenge as a strategy. When they call you at the last minute and somebody cannot communicate the words clearly, but actually they are excited to see Christ. Or they have experienced Him in that journey when they are going away and say they say, call a reverend or a priest for me. Now I just want to tell you whether the reverend arrived or for your death or you died. Uh, before the Reverend arrived, the moment you open your lips and say, Lord, save my life and take me, we will be shocked to find you in heaven. Yeah. Now, don't clap for that just. Clap seriously that there are many who are going to be in heaven. <laughs> I have witnessed this, and there is a gentleman I will not mention a name who went in coma, came back and asked for the priest to come and then when I arrived he told me I have been on a journey for the, a long time and he said you don't know I said no, I went to a place very peaceful but this man has told me to come back and when I came back I saw you and he said this is my last time I went to this person and then we had a chat, a chat, and whatever we had discussed that it was all tears. And I don't know how we ended up into that story. Whatever we had chatting, that was between me and that gentleman. But at the end of the day, he said, pray for me that I will go back to that peaceful place. Because they asked him, if you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he said, yes. I prayed as he finished the prayer and said, Amen. The army dropped and he went back to where he had come. Now that is one way, but today the reason we have come for our Shreddy say we pray, we see pray, the night manya, the night pray, when you are way to is to make a decision when there is still time. I had clear when our sister was reading, those words seem to be touching. That therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweigh them all. So fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is. Praise the Lord. So what you are seeing externally here, you know, I know at least I may be not the one they can call handsome man. But there are those who are handsome than me. But I also know God knows that I'm handsome in my way. Praise the Lord. Now, it doesn't matter how you look like, doesn't matter uh, your academic advice. Uh, Levels of certificates, PhD, or whatsoever. It doesn't matter which family you came from. God looks at you as His own wonderful finished work. Praise the Lord. 
So tell your neighbor that neighbor, I'm not a duplicate. You are not. Someone that the lady says that you are wonderfully and fearfully made. In his image, he knew you. Whether somebody is saying that you are not a duplicate, it doesn't matter. God looks to what is in your heart which is not seen. We are always constantly confused and deceived by what we see physically. That doesn't matter before the, the Creator. The Creator is looking at your heart. And now I just want to bring something, but not also to give us comfort enough, or to make us comfortable enough, but if you know that you know that you're a person who loves justice, right justice, not emotional justice for people, I just want to tell you that on, you are on your journey to fulfill what God wants you and I to do. You know there is emotional justice or uh, activism, but there is when you are just enough. And that word just, the just shall live by faith, is the same word as righteousness. Praise the Lord. So if you are just enough, then you are righteous. And so this morning, allow me to share with you that Paul was seeing all this situation. And he was seeing himself in prison, in chains, but was busy writing all these books. A good number of them he wrote them when he's in prison. Now when our brother and our grandfather journeyed, Go back and listen to those whose lives were changed or touched by his actions. And then you ask yourself, I say, what will people say about me when I die? Now, if that is people, then what will God say about my life and how I spent it? Praise the Lord. It's okay to live in a very good place. I have traveled in some few countries, and when you're in those hotels, oh my goodness, Everything they are bringing, they are calling you, they are giving you this, they are caring for you, and you feel like you shouldn't go back home. And when you go back home and they don't give you the same kind of treatment, just like, uh, can I start the same at home? And it's hard and expensive. And so the life on earth may exactly be like how you are running your home. And the life in heaven is like when you go to that place where they treat you very well and you don't know what to do, even when you have paid small money. But for heaven, it's permanent, it's eternal. So how have you prepared your life? When you go and they open the books. I love it in Revelation. The book of Revelation is chapter 20. From verse 11 at your free time you can read. And the books were opened. And Luke warns us in chapter 10 and says, Do not be proud that all those things listen to you, but be proud that your name is written in heaven. And this is the reason why we are here. We are not here to pray for Jose Yukoto. He finished his work, but then he breathed his last. Actually, this is an opportunity for all his life to reflect in yours and mine and also to do better maybe than what he has done or to move close to what he has done. Praise the Lord. I'm very happy that at Julius here he is able to stand. I just want to tell you that you need now to fix your eyes on Jesus more than ever before. When they ask Graham, Billy Graham, that what would you want God to do for you now that you are really old? After entirely from which he said, I want to pray for myself. Son, truly, I have to pray for my friends. What would you want God to do for you now that you have come to see a very brilliant man, man of wisdom, man of knowledge, man of understanding? What would you want God to do for you after achieving what you have achieved? And as I come to conclusion, I just encourage us that this journey of called death or life and death is for everyone. It's for whether you give someone there, whether you disappoint someone and then you are going there also. Hello?
we are also going there. Because the Bible is clear, do unto others what you want others to do. So we may fear that hey, this one so has powers, has this in the place. Yeah, it's okay, they have powers. But they will also face death like they face birth. Now, the conclusion of this is saying, let us fix our eyes not on the things that are seen, not on the physical things. Some of us, we have faces like, uh, they will look at you and everybody is scared, but when they get to interact with you, when they get to discuss with you, they have a thing that you have the best of the best in all the hearts they have ever seen. True or false? So it's not how you look like here that can explain your internal values, your internal understanding, not at all. But all what we are seeing physically, the vehicles, the houses, the companies, the education, academics, the children, the family, the husband, name everything you want to mention, they are just temporary. They are just Tell your neighbor that that's sad news. The good news is that Jesus is eternal. Salvation is eternal. Praise the Lord. And God has given us a very challenging situation that we can only make a decision to follow him by ourselves on our own. Not him to push us. Friends, for me, if you want to give me something, give it to me. But when you give me a, a, an opportunity to make a choice, it's a very big challenge. Because I don't know what is in your mind when you decided that I should have. This is what you are giving me. And so Jesus has given us eternal life, but he says make a choice. Why? Because there is eternal life and eternal hell. Eternal life and eternal hell. So he concludes that John says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. If you hear the word of the Lord, you have eternal life. And you will not be judged because of whatever you have been doing before. All the things he forgave you. He says that the east is far from the west. And so all your sins will be forgiven. Oh my goodness, I don't know if I can mirror what I have done personally in life. What I have gone through when people are single, not seeing. And then he comes to me one to come and be called his servant. I can't imagine. And so this morning he's inviting you to come to the same life. And he says again, he says, very truly I tell you, time is coming. And time has come now when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. Can you imagine even the dead will hear the word of the Son of God? But they cannot respond. They cannot. Now you is able to respond, they want to pray with you. And the choir can sing for us all to Jesus and surrender. You could be grieving, you could be going through a serious pain right now. Just want to encourage you to continue grieving. Don't stop grieving, but grieve with hope. And as you grieve with hope, accept Him, Christ alone, who can change things. Some of us are saying, when you die, you come where you are. You don't know where somebody has gone unless you are sure that you know their testimony. So this is a moment for you and I to change our lives and surrender to God. Let's sing choir.
Lord, I want to thank you for this money that your children and friends have brought together. To say thank you for the life of our own Gideon Koto, the life well lived and rewarded up to this time. I pray that you bless it and sanctify it for the extension of the ministry of comfort and presence in that home. That those who will gather, at least we drink some water as they even continue thinking about how you gave them that life and how you have taken them away. May you also comfort the family with these resources for the sake of your glory through Christ our Lord. Friends, still standing on page 6, let's go together to the words of what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Catholic Council. I would like to invite at least one or two people to pass there and join the, the team of the cathedral to count that money so that they can be able to bring it back to us on time and we hand it over to the family. And also, just for our own information, uh, I just want to say, Victor, if you do not uh, announce who you are, you may just look at you and say, the one spoke. He was speaking rhetoric, and these days I'm seeing people speaking rhetoric, and those are not rhetoric. So, Ninoe, Reverend Patrick Kamara, once again, and Seja Musita, Wagaba Akwere, Choka Yvonne Yagur, Abachwa, Abachwa Nwakunzara, Abachwa Nwakunzara, Senyoe, Abasumbi, Nwakwere, Samora Mulhanu, yeah, I'd like to invite the MC to take us through the speeches and then we get to know each other more and more. MC. Uh, thank you so much, Reverend uh, Patrick Kamara. Um, apologies earlier on, I think the mask muffled uh, my voice. We have come to the speeches. Um, the first speech we're going to have will come uh, from Sos Moijana and Mr. Chris Namitari, who will be presenting on behalf of the family. And Mr. Sos Moijana will be uh, taking us through uh, the passing of the late Uncle Gideon Kojo. And after that, we shall have Mr. Zaka Hero, so kindly uh, be ready to come and give your speech. Just to reiterate, we would want to give our speeches in the shortest time possible, not more than five minutes, so that we can allow for Aunt Julia to speak freely. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning, family. Good morning, um, everybody that knew Uncle Gideon as the man, the great man he is. My name is Sos Bojana. I am a nephew to the late Gideon Kojo. I'm here today to tell you and to give some facts about the passing. My background, I'm a physician in Washington, D.C. and spent a lot of time with the Kojos, especially towards the end. Uncle Gideon was a very active man. He was active in many ways. His brain was active, his body was active. He liked to run, and running was a passion of his. He ran all the way through 
his retirement. Unfortunately, one day on a run in McLean, he fell and he suffered a traumatic brain injury. When he fell, he, he had a hematoma, subdural hematoma, which is bleeding from the brain. It was a pretty serious fall and he needed to have neurosurgery urgently. He had the surgery at Virginia Hospital Center in Washington, D.C. The first surgery went well. He came through on the other side quite well. I remember sitting with him in the intensive care unit recovery, and we talked about all kinds of things. World affairs, politics, just like he used to love, well, as all of you know. Well, time went on, and unfortunately, Uncle Gideon fell again, re-injuring the first injury, and unfortunately required surgery yet again. This time, unfortunately, the surgery was a bit more difficult, and he did not recover fully. After that time, he went through a series of slow decline of his health. Eventually, he ended up needing much more intense care, first at home, and then eventually in a skilled care facility. Uncle Gideon then developed bacterial pneumonia, which is common for people in a skilled facility. He required hospital stay, he required antibiotics, and just like the first brain injury, he recovered that first time around. Unfortunately, and again, which is common for older people in care settings, he had another bout of bacterial pneumonia. This time, however, he did not recover. And unfortunately, he did succumb to that second bout of bacterial pneumonia. It was a shock. It was sad uh, for all of us, for Auntie Juliet, for Robert, Rhoda, Timothy, all the kids, Linda, Rita, and myself, who were there for him at that time. A very sad moment. But I'm here to tell you that Uncle Gideon was a wonderful man, a man full of life, full of vim and vigor, and I think it's fair to say he lived life to its fullest. And I think he squeezed everything possible out of life. So I'm here today to give you the medical facts so that there's no confusion about what happened and about the events leading to the passing of Uncle Gideon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan and Jenna. <coughs> Fellow monarchs, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Christian Ali of Mine, and I'm here to bring you greetings from elders of our family and also to bring you a message by. <coughs> Again, Yoko Majana, who called me yesterday and asked me to read this message. And of course, I knew he gave me a bad uh, take job, but uh, I'll do my best to deliver that message. Part of it was in Toro. I've done my best to try and translate and pick a few excerpts from the speech and make it into and uh, translate it into English for the purpose of this congregation. Mirongo Hachwari Kabrani District, 28th February 2022. Speech by the head of family, Ongusi Mwajana Yehu Jusi Adie. Akiki Juliet Nkojo, all the children of Atochi who called your present and those who have not been able to be here, I'm sure wherever you are, you share with us in grief and in spirit. Former colleagues at the Ministry of Finance, Bank of Uganda, and the World Bank. 
government representatives, friends, and heroes. Abagaya, Abagaya Kati, and other kinds of those present here, all protocol observed. It's my honor to welcome you to the service celebrate life of my brother and friend, Atochi Gideon Koja. I join everyone, thank the Almighty God for the life of Atochi Koja because it was a life lived to the fullest. I also thank God for this day that seemed very unlikely and distant for us to celebrate his life and accord him Exact same because of uh, the global COVID 19 pandemic and all the travel restrictions that have been on. I don't spend much of his adult life defending his economic classification and serving his country and humanity in distinguished capacities with unmatched accomplishments and integrity. If you go by modern day comparisons, he was an accomplished economist that executed duties of his various offices with firmness of principles, dignity, and honor. At no single moment in his professional career was he conflicted, implicated, or ever had his integrity questionable anywhere. As a family, we are proud and defined by virtue and I hold in deep pride and adoration because as a family, we are proud and defined by virtue and I hold Gideon in deep pride and adoration because he followed the footsteps of our parents who also served Torah and country with the same quiet faith selflessly and we are also never implicated in any illicit dealings for self -bending. My story about Apochi Hojo is the story of our heritage. It's the story of the success of the great families of Prime Minister Jose Hojo, the son of Bajana, and many other ancestral people. Details will be shared tomorrow at our home and I implore all of you to join us and we celebrate his great life and I will make fair time to divulge more into the details of his childhood, adult and family life. I will give an elaborate detail on his personal, on his parenthood, both sides, clan, professional life and family. As a family, Gideon was a pillar. He taught us and gave us a sense of loyal and loving friend, brother, parent, and clansman. He loved his family and clan with total dedication. Whenever he came around, he looked for us all and listened to us personally, and we enjoyed every bit of our intimate relationship. In brief, at work, we will organize your decency and sincerity and kind soul which will forever be with us. To approach his children, we shall make time and discuss more, but I must emphasize to you that at work, he nurtured friendships with people who walks of life and kept, and kept his friendships all the time. For good, in everyone and found it. To you, this should be a passport that should open the gates of the world if you uphold his love, humor, and hold dear his cherished gift of kindness. Indeed, he lived a life impactful, positively to many people, and supported well meaning groups, and I'm sure you will see many of them by the time we go through this same of ceremony. By the way, of a hand clap, please join me in St. Cousins Cathedral for according to our family befitting service 
and giving us and give us a special nourishment and blessing during this difficult time of money. I'm looking for that. Special thanks go to his wife, Akiti Juliet Nkojo, and her children for the love and care they gave him while he was sick and weak up to the time the Lord called him and more specifically for the long haul psychological endurance and ultimately bringing him to his body for final resting at his home in Toro, which he so dearly loved and cherished. To our to all our children in Kampala and surrounding areas, thank you for working together with the US with the US team tirelessly to facilitate the process of organizing a decent celebration of a talking coach's life. Carolyn Bajana as the lead person and all other children did a commendable job and indeed we appreciate your efforts and please up the family spirit and even work harder to keep together. I wish to thank all institutions, organizations, friends and leaders for their limited support, moral, financial, spiritual, etc. that has been accorded to us and specifically to Kojo's family in this trying moment. We pray that the good Lord rewards you abundantly for your kind gestures. We shall remain indebted to your kindness and pray that we keep up with the love of brother and spirit. I thank you all for listening to my words and request you to join us in Rongo, Hachimari, Karoli District for the final ceremonies. Massive journeys to those who will travel to the portal and God bless you all. Adieli, Yahoo, Bajana. It's a trying time, so we have to keep reminding people to try and uh, keep the speeches within those five minutes because, of course, the church has its time. We'll hear from the friends, uh, Mr. Zan Kahero, and uh, after that, we'll ask the representative from Bank of Uganda to prepare. The clutch. Good morning and greeting in the name of the Lord. Um, I stand here on behalf of the Kahero family. My name is Philip Kahero, uh, son of the late Zach. And I'm proud to read a message from our mother and brothers and sisters. It includes a um, colonial message. We learned in the very sad news of the loss of our beloved Atoki, Gideon Mukoja, with shock and deep sorrow. It, it is very, very sad. Our family was blessed to have had Atoki in our lives. He was a true friend. In fact, a brother in every sense of the word to the later Moti, Zakaheru, my dad. Their friendship dates back to their youthful days. They shared a house for many years when they started at work. We were told that during that time they never had any misunderstanding. While we were in Italy, in Nairobi, I told you traveled there to visit a Sony King official duty and spent a lot of time in the world. That friendship, that love that he showed us continued throughout, even after about his passing. He would send a talkie to my mom and us messages and when we used to remember about his death, he was there. When my sister was getting married, he was there to celebrate that wedding. And he even told Charlotte that whenever she needs a home to go to, his door is always open 
while she walked in DC. So we felt the love that we wanted at the time. Thank you. He was a very special and genuine friend. I told you he touched us when he traveled to Europe to see Monte York and when he was going to kill and then after he passed soon after. The more we heard the English children, our children, the least important of the year and the same as the students. And the Lord continued to come from the city and strengthen him. Did I see Fiona? Fiona and Semen? She's active. The bereaved family led by Mrs. Juliet Koja. The clergy, distinguished officials from central government who may be here, all protocol observed. My name is Solomon Okecho. I am the executive director for risk and strategy management at the central bank. Our deputy governor. Dr. Michael Atingeko had planned to be here himself. Unfortunately, in the morning, uh, due to unavoidable circumstances, that was not possible. And he requested us to come and do the needful. Allow me accordingly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to present the Bank of Uganda remarks. Dear fellow mourners, it was with great heartfelt sadness that Bank of Uganda learned of the death of the late Mr. Gideon Nkojo. Mr. Nkojo's respectable training and experience, coupled with his ethical code of conduct and sound judgment, earned him the appointment as governor and chairman of the board of directors of Bank of Uganda in 1979. He diligently continued his service through the regime changes into 1980. During his tenure, with strength and humility, he took on the task of the building the confidence of the international community in the Ugandan financial sector and economy after the economic crisis of the 1970s. In so doing, he paved the path to Uganda's economic recovery post turbulent years. In light of this, 
during Bank of Uganda's 50th anniversary celebrations in 2016, the bank paid tribute to Mr. Nkojo, though in absentia, for his positive contribution to the restructuring of the central bank from the economic crisis that hit Uganda for almost a decade. Mr. Nkojo was a seasoned economist. This has already been said here, credited for several distinguished abilities that facilitated his seamless delivery during his tenure as the Chief Executive Officer of the Central Bank. Despite challenges of a hostile macroeconomic environment, he was however greatly acknowledged for his high level of integrity. This was also mentioned here which is one of the core values of the central bank. He was of strong moral character and led the bank with honesty, dignity, and without fear or favor. His wings let alone stretched to see him join the World Bank, as you all know, at the end of 1980, where he continued to serve his continent as a representative of various African countries. Through, through his decades of service in Washington, D.C., his presence remained felt back home as he fostered the development of partnerships between the World Bank and Uganda. Mr. Nkojo may be gone, but he is memorized in our hearts through a legacy of dedicated public service. The Bible says, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, that since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. To the brief family, please accept my sincere condolences on behalf of the staff, management, and the Board of Directors of Bank of Uganda. Farewell be Governor Gideon Nkojo. Until we meet again, may your soul rest peacefully. Signed, Dr. Michael Atinego, Deputy Governor. Thank you. I'm told we have, uh, we, we have to do the read as we as you leave. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kicho. Mr. Sangu told me, and Mr. Sangu told me, invite you to make uh, your brief remarks. Um, I would like to reiterate that uh, we will try to make sure there is as plenty of time as possible in the home for people to make their speeches, but for now, we will try and uh, accommodate the time that we have so as we can give uh, an opportunity sufficient time to give a speech. Our sister, um, Mrs. Gideon Ngoyo and the, the family, the clergy, all protocol observed. We stand here on behalf of the Jesuit family, um, the late engineer Esa Jesuito, and Mama Ekiria Jesuito. All passed. Mama died in 2016. They lived a well life. They got married when they were very young, and especially our mom. She was just 14 years. And they gave to their first and our first born sister, Juliet, the beautiful girl. 
well loved, cared for. She was the energy of their love and passion. And so Gideon coming to our family and getting married to Juliet, he took the queen of our family. And so we stand here to recognize that and separate Gideon's life. The man who took our sister and who cared for her all these years. Gideon Diden was not only brother in law to us, but was our big brother because he got married to our big sister. He loved us all. He cared for us. And he him, and especially with their parents, they had a very unique relationship. Because him coming from a Toro culture and Baganda culture, he broke the Baganda culture. He could come home and sit with mom, kneeling and sitting at her feet, and they could talk and talk and talk and talk. That is a very uncommon to Baganda culture. And so all of us, I think, she made, they mentored us, Gideon mentored us to, to break that barrier between the cultures and especially the in-laws. So we're here to celebrate that unique relationship of that love. There was a time when he, um, Gideon went for study, and the only time he went home, he, he trusted to leave his dear young wife, who was to bring her back home. And he, he brought her when she was pregnant, the first child. Even as a younger boy, I was accompanied by Juliet. She was walked from home at Narukoloko to Rubaga Hospital. And when she reached there, because of that descent, she gave straight away birth to Robert. So Robert is part also of that Chizito family because his first life was in the Chizito family and the rest of the family. So we really thank God for Gideon and Juliet because there was time when we lost a number of our brothers and they took care of our children. They educated them. They encouraged them to go out and study. And they pay for their tuitions. So we really praise the Lord for our sister Juliet and your beloved husband for the ministry did in our family. Thank you very much. So we want to praise the Lord for the family. I went to work in a temple and in Gideon introduced me to his family. They came. They saw Morgan and the children. And then his best man, Tom, the little Tom, Sabinti, and many others. So they are now even part of my life and my wife. By the way, when I was getting married in 1980, Gideon called me to the bank and he asked me many questions. And he take, said, I'm fine, I'm giving you free of all the private transport. And he gave us a car, and we took the car for a number of days. So that's how Gideon was so passionate. And we really, as a family of the Chisito family, and the extended family of the Chisito family, we really will miss Gideon. Stan, our brother, lived in America, has lived in there. He has been close again to the family when the years they have been in America. Um, just a sound, just say what possible. Maybe I will be remiss at this moment, the whole family will be remiss me to thank everybody that has come to celebrate uh, with us uh, Gideon's life. 
who has been a brother-in-law and uh, really taking care of, uh, as, as you know, Uganda has gotten through many, many uh, situations that I've uh, heard about when I was in the States. Um, but most of you probably have experienced that, but Gideon has, has been a steady force within the family to um, provide whenever there was no way to, 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 uh, to, to earn a living. My parents, my parents who have been uh, old at this, uh, at this time, these, these many years, and so income was shrinking, and, and it has been quite a bit of, of, of help to have somebody who can uh, at least anchor the family and, and support it financially. And, um, and so we are glad that even the bank can recognize his um, uh, generosity and, 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 and uh, giving spirit and, 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 and all the things that he has done uh, in the in the, from in the branches has done double for us um, uh, as a family. So we thank you for coming to celebrate with us his life because I'm sure, uh, as you know, he enjoyed life like nobody's child. When he was, <coughs> particularly in India, when he went to, uh, to study in India, he played um, uh, as 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 uh, Dr. Bojana said. He played uh, tennis, and he, he was, and in fact, my sister uh, did have a good time playing with both of them, playing at one time or, or the other. I never had a chance to see them play, but, but they really enjoyed it, uh, themselves whenever I went there. And, and I don't know which end of a racket I should, I should be holding to play, but uh, they enjoyed it. Uh, and, and he was really um, a, a, a person that enjoyed life, and that's why he was running. And I don't think it wasn't it was carelessness when he fell. It was it was probably an, uh, an accident when he fell uh, because he would never go out uh, if he wasn't feeling up to par. So uh, we thank you so much for coming. And um, uh, we hope that um, you will have somebody like us we had uh, to, to rejuvenate and also encourage you in, in your life. And so thank you so much. Thank you. Um, our next speaker will be from Robert. Robert would like to invite you to come and make a speech. And just before um, I do it, can make us. How's everyone? Good morning. everyone for coming. Uh, we really, as a family, appreciate the support and love that you've shown us in a, in a difficult time for us. Um, uh, our father meant quite a bit to us. <coughs> and um, I wanted to personally thank everyone um, for their support and the kind words. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's been an interesting journey coming back. It's, this is where my parents got married. I actually went to school here, Nakasero Primary School. Um, so it's good to be back with uh, friends and family. Um, thank you, Pastor. Um, 
And again, thank you for everyone for participating in the memorial service. Um, it's hard to overstate uh, what my father meant to our family. We obviously had to immigrate to, uh, to the U.S. because of the situation here in Uganda. And when we were, um, first go to another country, and, um, we need, uh, all you can do is depend on each other as a family. And, um, you know, our father was our rock. Um, um, he was the one who would say, um, you know, you're smart, you're intelligent, um, I know things are difficult now, but have faith, believe in God, and things will be, things will be fine. So, he's been there, he's been obviously been a big part of my life. Um, he was the first person to help me uh, learn to drive. He was there when I got my first apartment. He was there when I um, bought my first house. Um, he was the person I talked to about what my career was going to be. So um, he would be sorely missed for us and family. And yeah, he will. He's. He's the voice that I think of if I'm trying to make a, a big decision. I know my sister and the rest of the family feel the exact same way. And we want to honor that and think about all the values he exemplified and put before us about hard work, faith, honesty, courage. You'll miss it too. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Robert. These are very deep and touching words. We are truly celebrating the end of our generation. I would like to echo the thanks for everyone who has joined us today to celebrate the life of the great giant of our generation. We're now coming to uh, the final speech, uh, which will be from uh, Juliet. And, uh, okay, I've uh, been informed by the family that Robert has uh, spoken uh, on behalf of the family. We'll now uh, hand the uh, microphone back to our celebrant as we have come to the end of our speeches. been asked to invite Linus Jaguar to come and make a uh, cli uh, clarify something.
Rona Shukule, they were only two children. I think Rona Shukule was in Sita. And one of the reasons I'm standing here is kindly requested to forgive us and bear with us that we there was a small mistake in that small book. Uh, where another name is mentioned, but the right name is Rhoda Okule, and uh, this little sister was named after Rhoda, after our grandma. As I said, my mother and I took her own to in Russia, as also in Toro. And, excuse me. Akiko was born to Mugurisi Dawiti Chikukule, and that's why I will request uh, the Chikukule family members who are here, the daughters, uh, no, the grandchildren of Mugurisi uh, Chikukule Atenu, please to stand up and receive for recognition. I saw some of them. I don't know whether they are still around. Yes. Okay, in brief, that's that. Uh, the main reason why I'm standing here, though I really had to correct that, was to actually stand out angry and honestly, because as you've already heard when I talked past on, it was that kind of difficult time. Me as a person, I didn't have um, enough hopes of thinking that one time, one day, there would be that opportunity of seeing his body or his family back home. And I was able to wonder, are they eating, are they able to eat something, are they able to, you know, what do they have in mind? So it would really, really torture me in my mind and I kept on crying to God because um, uh, our great-grandfather, that Dawit Chikukule, started a church in, in Fukuoto. He would wake up right for home. He, he beats the drums, he wakes up everyone to come up and pray and read the Bible. So I would remind God, please God, remember the time your son, your servant, Kukule, would spend calling people to, to listen to your word and to, to know your faithfulness. So I kept on thinking and believing that God was still faithful. One time, one day, which is actually today, that we shall gather somewhere to celebrate uh, the life of our talking. Now, I'm so sorry if I stumbled anyone as I was crying, weeping, you know, it is hard to bear, but I wasn't complaining to go over with God or arguing with God. I was just in my heart thanking God for his faithfulness. That, but most, more so, um, I, I also want to, to thank you all who have come to celebrate Atoki's life, finally getting closure which is very comforting. True, we had God's will was done and uh, he took, uh, uh, took his life away. And then we needed, like as Joseph prayed for Jesus' body to take it for burial, we also needed to see how uh, his body come back home. Uh, I want so much now, in a very special way, a kick and a children. Whatever you go through, God was with you. We were also praying uh, for you, and we cannot thank you enough. You may wonder why should we thank you. Maybe that's what you expected of doing, but in a special way, I just want to thank you so much for all the comfort and all the attention you gave to my uncle and our friend, Uncle Atok. I also thank Everyone who is here, who is gathered here, today is a working day, but you have all managed to put off whatever you are doing, to come here and comfort the family, to come and, 
I see and celebrate and talk is like. As the Reverend was preaching here, I just remembered. One time I asked her, talk, have you ever thought of God like as our grandpa would tell us about God and uh, have you given your life to God? Yeah, he said, Mwana wanga moti, use it for a sepako. If I hadn't given my life to God, do you think I would be alive? And those are like 10 years ago. He told me if I were to open this shirt for you, I just quickly told him, I told you don't do that because you have not used to sing or cause benches. So you see, you will just see a mat. You will think that, and I don't know uh, it knows whether it is really like a mat. So, in other words, you say, they will open here, they close, next time they open, they close. Just, just know that he passed through a lot. I thank God for his life. I thank you so much. I thank the Reverend and Mr. Reverend for having allowed me just to say those few remarks. May God bless you and God bless you. May I talk in soul be good in a peaceful place tonight. My dear brothers, uh, thank you so much for joining us to celebrate the life of Uncle. My name is Bagaya Bonjana, uh, nephew, and Uncle was my godfather. Uh, may his soul rest in peace and God bless you all. Thank you so much. Uh, I had told us that in Toronto, you are out there and you are not here. So I will sit and I will sit at that time. My father told me to be mazi. Now I am here. So you are here. Kiki, thank you very much for bringing back our our son and our grandchild and the whole family. And also, I like to request that. Let this become the starting point of all of you coming back. Uh, we will have a global service online um, conducted by Mezzo Diocese every Sunday at 3 o'clock. And I'm told the whole diaspora actually is logged into that service. They're able to hear the tour again, the songs and everything. And so help all these people to know the language. I am not saying they stop yours, they can also know yours and also the language acquired. Thank you so much. Because when I heard them speak, I thought they were real Americans. And just uh, to appreciate each one of us, we have put together 1 million sheets, 186,000. And let me hand it over to the family to support them. We shall stand on a bit and stretch. And then and the choir give us a song as you come to the end.